Hey everyone, if you enjoyed this video, do make sure to like and subscribe and come hang out with us in Discord. Good evening everyone, or good morning in case you're in a time zone after the East Coast. Late night interview tonight with Dale. How are you doing? Hello! I am doing fantastic tonight. It's, it's good night today. So Dale, uh, you're someone who's fairly new to the server, so if you don't mind, just uh, talk here like a little brief bit about yourself for those people who don't know you, even though lots of people in the server definitely know who you are and love you. Absolutely. Um, I'm Dale. I, I love draft, all things draft. I love Pokemon. And this is like heaven to me, being in a, a big draft server, being able to play draft, experience draft, talk draft with awesome people. Um, so I'm glad I, you know, I found found draft rig and um, found this wonderful community, and I'm I'm glad to be here. Yeah, and we are so happy to hear about that because you know, it's a large large server like you said a lot of players and it's it's we don't get to talk to everyone so hearing that type of positive feedback is uh very important to us so dale so this is um your first uh season i believe doing a draft league with us correct yeah this is the first season doing a draft league with draft rig although i have done other draft seasons in the past with other communities and I know that you said like you're more of like a doubles player, and is this your first single season too or no? Um, I did two single seasons a long time ago, and but I wasn't very like calculated in how I did anything. I just I didn't have the same level of um, experience and um, Pokemon IQ that I do now when it and that really took a lot of time to develop. Yeah. Um. Through well, generally playing doubles. Like I had to really think playing doubles. So once I developed those those feelings and those like intuitions, it just transferred over to singles, and now I'm a much better singles player just because I play doubles. Yeah, I think they all. You know, there's a lot of differences in terms of gameplay. Like one of the biggest things, obviously, for most people is uh, using protect. Definitely not as common in singles. But mm -hmm. It can. Uh, Definitely be an interesting scouting move. I know for a certain someone in the server lives by it. Yeah. Um. Okay. Um. So you said before that uh, you know, you did like a singles draft before. Like, what? How would you compare your experience um from that server to the server? Because I know you know rules can be different, personalities can yeah. be different. But like you know, I'd like to hear about your experience in this first your first uh, draft league here at Draft Rig. Yeah. Um. Compared to the. First time I did singles draft. The the draft rig singles system, the the board, you know, how everyone's on top of things. I know I was in Wake League, but it, it's so much more organized and so much more like everyone's on top of their stuff. Like compared to that first uh first time I did it. It was much more casual then. Um, this one, there's a little bit more, like, experience, like, the experience level's a little higher, and there's a bigger, like, disparity of experience. You have people who are just kind of beginners, kind of mid-level players, probably where I was when I first did my singles draft, and then you have, um, players who are very experienced in singles, who have been doing it a while, who have been doing singles draft a while, who are used to it, have those intuitions, it's, uh, really cool to see that. Yeah, hold on one second. I have to turn off something downstairs. Okay. Sorry about that. So, anyways, so yeah, live. We take draft. Have fun. Take uh, more than just getting their matches done. We hope the other mm -hmm. people like feel the same way. 
obviously like some in some cases we can be we might be considered a, a bit more strict but i think we are the philosophy that likes to make sure that everyone has a fair shot at fighting and people aren't waiting to like um waiting around to fight when they've spent so much time um putting in effort to like make make the teams and just try to be a competitive player you know yeah absolutely just a little bit more than just getting battles done and trying to have a good record cuz you know if that's all it is if, if all it is is just getting battles done and have a good record there's a lot more incentive to when you're at the bottom to just quit and and that's always a tough situation is when you have people quitting so giving a little bit more meat to it a little bit more value like it, it's it's helpful yeah so going to what you said about like you know people coming and going um, you got to be actually be a fill-in coach for uh, Wake League, and um, it's been um, quite a ride, right? <laughs> being in Wake yeah. League. Yeah, quite a ride being in Wake League is an understatement. <laughs> so, for those of you who haven't been following Wake League, it's been a league which is more like a sleep league because we've had three or four drops. Um. And uh, I actually had to fill in as one of the coaches along with uh, DC because uh, we wanted to make sure that, you know, the, the people who have been coming in every week and, and battling, they should have the, you know, the right to still play all their matches. We don't like forfeits here. So um, it's, it's, it's been, like I said, quite a trip. So, uh, Dale, when you took over the team, you, you picked it up in about like week two, correct? Yeah, it was week two. And uh, what were your like? Um, what were your thoughts on the team that you you kind of inherited? I know it was a very like stall based team because. Yeah. Um, so for those of you who don't know, it's like just like from the team itself. There's like Pokemon like Toxapex, Corviknight. Um, it it did have a uh, already <laughs> yeah. Uh, Zamazenta uh, was there. That was the big heavy hitter. Cresselia was there. Chansey was there. I traded all three. Chansey, Cresselia, and Zamazenta. I felt like it didn't have a good identity. Stall's really hard to play in um, draft because everyone wants to play aggressive and set up anyways. And Taunt, Sub are very potent um, against uh, against a more like... Um, what's the word? Like a uh, passive team. So... I felt like the team was too passive. I made a couple trades, got some a couple big trades. I mean, I got rid of Terra Cresselia and Zamazenta and picked up Landorus and Meowskarada and uh, Terra and my um, my uh, Skeledurge. So it felt a little bit more like it has a presence. It has an offensive presence. Um, and it paid off. I lost my first match with that original team. And uh, I won my second one, and then I made those couple big trades, and I won my next three. So, yeah, it was good. It was a good season. Yeah, I think you did have a very good season. You and like you said before, you picked some good pivots. Um, Lando can be a good, great pivot. And has a good skill in intimidate. And Yaskarad has so much um, value in the moves that it it can use. And then being mm -hmm. able to crit Flower Trick is also pretty nice too. Um, oh yeah, that saved me. And then Zapdos was also one of your additions as well, correct? Yes. Yeah, Zapdos. I think it did very valuable for some of the games. But, um, so, you know, like we said before, um, you, you decided to trade some, but you also kept some Pokemon. What were, like, one of the main reasons that you decided to keep some of the more uh, bulky, I guess, defensive Pokemon? Yeah, like Corviknight and Toxpex. Um, Corviknight, I really like it as pivot value. I, I honestly was thinking about making Corviknight my Terra option, but I also felt that it doesn't have the same offensive presence as does a Skeledurge. And I really wanted to up my, my danger level, so to speak. Um, and it, so I had to sort of shelve, okay, I'm not going to spend points tearing the Corviknight. And I didn't have enough trades to do it anyways. Like, I, I would have missed out on other things. Uh, and the Toxpex, I love Toxpex. It doesn't have to be on a stall team to do good. It's just a, a meat shield. It can eat hits 
and recover really well compared to some of these other uh, regenerator mons. It's it's up there as some one of the top ones. So I really like Tox Specs with an offensive team for sure. Yeah, it's got a great typing, being able to resist uh, fighting moves along with fairy moves. Um, and I think you did a good job in like using Skeledurge. Uh, definitely like one of the the better Terra captains because of just it's it's got an immense bulk, great ability, and unaware, um, which helps prevent setup. Um, what did you think of it as a Terra captain? Um, I thought it was underwhelming. I didn't do amazing with it. I think the most kills I got in a match was two. Um, it it just didn't have the same like punch. I think I wanted. I should have went with something faster, like maybe Terra Zapdos. But I will, probably would have had to do a whole bunch of different trades and not get Meowskarada. So it was it was always a trade off. There's always an opportunity cost, mm-hmm. and um, I just I I know it's good. I didn't like how it was how I used it. I think I could have done better. Um, Toxapex had one match where it got four kills. Like, it popped off. Toxapex can can go. Zapdos did amazing with a Mirror Herb. Like, those Pokemon are, like, my comfort picks. Skeldurge is definitely out of my comfort zone. So, like, let's talk about some of your other members' teams. So, I know that Weird Deer is a my dear, weird dear, I, I never pronounce it. Yeah, it's, it's one of those Pokemon that had been largely unused uh, for draft league. Uh, what was your impression of from using it in this in the season? I didn't bring it. <laughs> I oh wait no I I think I brought it once I brought it once so and it got it KO'd it got by, KO'd immediately. Yeah, it got KO'd by like a, a Galite I want to say or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I got KO'd immediately with a Night Slash. I uh, did not do good. Um, the reason why I picked it up was specifically to try and um, have a, an Intimidate Mon. That was before I had, uh, you know, um, uh, Landorus. That was before I had Lando T. So I really wanted an Intimidate Mon that could do stuff. And uh, in that first match with uh, Ubezin, uh which was week two... Uh, my week two match, just I, it didn't do anything. It was it was I brought it to Wall Sinistra, and he just brought in Cleavor every time, and uh, Cleavor just chunked my entire team. It was pretty bad. I didn't have a good answer to it, and uh, I lost that one. That was my only loss that I personally lost. So yeah, that was that was um, a tough matchup. I remember like watching it over and just like. Sinistra just kept forcing you out a lot of the time, right? And just worked out. It was, yeah, Cleavor and Sinistra just had really good matchups. And Galay just cleaned up at the end. I didn't have something fast enough. I think that was before I had Meowskarada as well. I didn't have, like, speed on the team. It was still quite a slow team. Yeah, like, you had, I mean, you had, like, two Mons that are faster than 100, but I still, I get what you're saying. I feel like as we've gone past uh, generations past six, it's like Nidamon has a base speed above like 125 now. It's kind of yeah. crazy to think about. Yeah, you, even if fun. it's a low tier Mon, just having something that can be fast and pivot mm-hmm. is huge. And I didn't have that. So, it, and I love to pivot. I love the vortex. Uh, mark my words, I will vortex on people. Um, it's fun. And I definitely try. I wanted the vortex more, but I just never got into an opportunity to just click U turn and volt switch over and over again. And uh, but I wanted to do it. <laughs> so now it's uh, I gotta ask about your uh, your you know your team name because it's not very often I see like the Magnazones. So what's the whole like origin inspiration behind the Milky Way Magnazones? Okay, so it originally started out that the team was the Milwaukee Magnazones, because I'm from Milwaukee area, and uh, I decided, okay, I'm not going to, you know, stick with Milwaukee Magnazones, because that was my first double season, I lost really bad, Um, I didn't make the playoffs, 
And I was like, okay, I needed the name change. That that's the reason why I lost was was the name. So I switched it to Milky Way Magnazones. And the next two double seasons, I was undefeated. Um, and then I just carried it on. So in in the past, like three draft seasons that I've done, I've only lost twice. Um, which is really cool. That is just just like being a being an opportunity to to play lots of games and and find success in all sorts of different formats. Uh, I love doing it, um, and I look forward to doing it more. So, like I think, like we said before, like you're definitely like you said more of a doubles player. And so, what was the what's the transition been like for like going into singles for like competitive battling? certain occasions like what do you feel like especially for draft league which is a monster of its own i think Mm -hmm. so like uh, are you asking like what are the differences between singles and doubles draft uh yeah like Like, that i see or like that or just like what are some things that you that were like very different in how you would play first first, Mm, okay singles draft versus playing for like doubles draft yeah singles um is very different just from a standpoint of making sure that i have adequate pivoting Making sure that I have adequate um, hazards is very important, and um, and making sure that I have more of an offensive presence in doubles and especially VGC. It can be very defensive. There's a lot of damage mitigation going around, like intimidate snarls and uh, you know various other parting shot, like you know different ways to reduce the incoming damage. And in singles, that's not really as big from what I can see. There's screens, Grim Snarl screens. That's kind of it. It's just screens. Like, I don't see a ton of, like, parting shot spam. I don't see a ton of, like, you have to go out of your way to get parting shot spam or go out of your way to get screens um, for specific setups. So. That's probably the biggest one, is damage mitigation, and maybe some hazards. Making sure that you have both of them uh, in in doubles and not in uh, singles. It's just not as important. Yeah. Definitely, definitely true. I've, I've seen that, like, like, hazards, like you said, just don't really play a role, even though, like, a lot of Pokemon can use, like, Focus Ash for, like, stay alive for, like, setup and stuff like that. It's still, like, yeah. not super important. Um, yeah, you, you don't switch as much. There's not as much, like, wild pivoting in doubles. Um, you don't, like, see switches every other turn in in doubles. A lot of time it's just staying in and clicking a move. And um, when something gets dicey, you just raw switch. So, like, Gl- Glamora is probably the only hazard user that you'd see. But that's just because its ability gives you free hazard. Like, you don't go out of your way to use, ha- use hazards then. Okay. Let's, uh, t- let's take a moment and just talk about some things that are not Pokemon because I know that I've learned about you a little bit over the past like month. We've talked chat a lot about things. I know you're someone who likes to uh, cook a lot, someone on the grill. So, you know, for those, of, uh, <laughs> for those Americans out there, uh, it, it's uh, July 4th, either day or, or maybe a little bit later if you're, um, if you're in a different time zone. So uh, are, are, what are you planning to cook on the grill for... For July fourth, Dale. Oh no! I have to to break your heart. I'm not. You're not. I'm not doing it. You have no idea how much you're breaking my heart right now, Dale. It's 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 like the day. I to can't. Deal. I, I I gotta eat better. Like I've been. I need. Like I've been really trying to eat better and feel good. And I I'm cutting out a lot of the meat that I'm eating. So. Uh, it's it's a painful thing that I'm not going to be smoking and not going to be uh, grilling as much. But I know my mom, I believe she's going to make some bratwurst. Bratwurst are pretty big in the area where I'm at. So, um, yeah, I guess I'm not doing it, though. I personally am not grilling. But oh, okay. Bra- right. Bratwurst, I All guess, right. is the answer. All right. So what, so what would be the thing that you would like to cook on the grill if you were eating on the slightly unhealthier side? <laughs> if I was if I was doing it, it would be barbecued ribs for sure. Gotta go with the barbecued ribs. But also, 
Um, I have a big slab of pork belly. I think I'd make some uh, pork belly burnt ends. That's I really love them, so yeah. I'd make some of them. What about yeah. what about vegetables? What about like corn and like? Oh, corn's peppers? gonna be made for sure. I don't smoke my corn. I grill that, but corn for sure. Gotta get, gotta have it. A little yeah. bit of butter, uh, a little bit of salt. Can't beat it. It's got the juice. Okay. Then I have a question from the audience, um, from Tacenda, who asked, uh, "Do you enjoy pivoting? Because it doesn't happen a lot in doubles." Sort of a newer and fresh thing. Oh, that's a good question. Um, I like pivoting just because I think the vortex gives me a little bit of dopamine. Like, just constantly schmixing my opponent. Like, I'm my core memory of when like like battling really clicked for me was I was using, and this is hilarious that I remember this, but I had a Lando and a Slowbro. A regenerator slow bro, and I was just pivoting in this thing's face, in a Fraligator's face. It couldn't hit me as ice fanging the slow bro, and it was, you know, using a different move on the, the Landorus, and I and I killed that Fraligator and the opponent forfeited. And that moment of like realizing that I can just schmix my opponent over and over. And they just are constantly on the back foot just from using, like, one type of move, just a pivoting move. It feels incredible. It's so cool. And that core memory is just instilled in how I play. I, I love that. It, it sucks that it's not in, like, doubles and VGC, but in singles, it's got to be there. I love the Vortex. I swear by it. You love the doubles as well in, du in singles? <laughs> No, I said I, I love. Uh, no, I, I love mean, the. Uh, I mean, the idea of like switching out and then switching into something else, like a like like a pivot, like that type of double. You've, you've heard of that term before, right? Or no? Oh, like double switching. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I, I don't like doing that. <laughs> I do not double switch. Very, very infrequently. I, I always feel like I get bit from it. So. So going back to the. Uh, Food discussion. Since, yeah. Then Dallas has another question, which is, have you okay. tried street corn before? Yes, I love street corn. It's delicious. There's a uh, food truck near where I live, mm. uh, a Mexican food truck, and they have delicious uh, street corn there, and it is awesome. I love it. Um, it's it's fantastic. It's got cheese in it. It's, you mm -hmm. know, it's, I love cheese. Yeah, cheese it's great. called elot, I want to say. So it's usually like corn with like uh, butter slash sour cream, mayonnaise, something along yeah. those lines. I think this um, one is sour cream. Certain cheese. It's, um, can't remember off the top of my head right now. Blanking. Yeah. Good. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Very mild, salty cheese. Correct. Ah, kocha cheese. Thank you. You're right. I was going to try. Yeah, that's what it is. I see it. Great, thanks for the assist. Oh yeah, the lime. Thank you. Oh yeah, the lime. Oh, the tahin. There. The tahin. No, no, no tahin on mine. Uh, not that I don't like it. It just doesn't come with it. <laughs> oh, okay. fair enough. Um, the lighter also has a question. Uh, his, okay. His question. Um, what's your favorite cut of steak? Favorite cut of steak. I'm going to break everyone's heart again. I'm not a beef person. I don't like beef. Oh, man. I yeah, don't glider. like we... beef. I'm breaking everyone's heart today. It's, uh, it's, it's, if you, if you look the question or some type in general, you'll find, um, Dale's, My tier list. Dale's tier list. Um, it may or may not make you have feelings, oh. um, about Dale in a certain <laughs> way. Um, all I can say is, Dale is not a beef person, um, so I I don't really know if and, and the thing is we we had we've had thorough discussions him and I about like this. What I've learned is when it comes to like steak, some people have never tried more than like one um, rarity or however you want, like you know way of it yeah. being cooked. 
So sometimes when people try like well done, they think steak's bad, and then when they try like medium rare, then like oh, it's very different. But you know, for for Dale, Dale has tried multiple versions, iterations. It's not, it's yeah, illusion. It's just not for him. But yeah, wow. yeah. I, for me, it's a texture thing. It's very much a texture thing. Like just to elaborate on that, like a good, like perfectly cooked rack of barbecued ribs, like my absolute top S tier meat barbecued ribs is so tender it just it's it melts it doesn't necessarily have to fall off the bone it's just so tender it doesn't take a lot of effort and to chew it when i eat beef it feels like i'm like a non on that thing like not for me like i'm not gonna chew that meat over and over it's not not what i'm looking for would you be able to share your barbecue sauce recipe for for us in the chat who would like to uh, taste it's so Something that see- you know that you seem to love that since you can't seem to share the love of beef with the rest of us here. Uh, I have a document. Let me oh, open this up. That's amazing. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad. I'm so. Let me see if that. I have this. And then, uh, I don't know if you saw, but Glider also put like all little Milwaukee and Fox fan. Nice. Oh no! Is this on my other computer? Okay. No, we'll. We'll figure it yeah, out I don't think time. I. I don't think I. I don't think I have it. So, oh well, oh, good. it's a secret <laughs> for now. <laughs> for now. So, Pokemon you know, is is a very fun game. It's why we're here. It's why we love to play it. Um, it's a great community. Usually, you know, obviously every place can be different, but it's a a game I think people can bond over, regardless of what generation you grew up on, because it's a game that you know every generation brings something different and. It keeps people around. So, uh, how long have you been like playing like competitive Pokemon or just Pokemon in general? So, Pokemon in general, um, I started playing Pokemon Gold on the Game Boy Color specifically. Um, so, OG Gold started playing that when I must have been like seven or eight. I love that game. I was obsessed with it. Didn't know how anything worked. Love the game. Um, I just thought it was cool catching little creatures and, you know, hunting them down and trying to fill out the Pokédex. Like, I thought it was amazing. Um, I didn't realize that at that time there were other games that came out that were Pokémon games. Like, I just thought this was the latest and greatest Pokémon game was Pokémon Gold on the Game Boy Color. Like, I didn't... I was so ignorant to all the other games out there. Um, but it, it was okay, because I loved it. And when I started playing competitive Pokemon, I got into competitive Pokemon uh, through Pixelmon, of all things, because I didn't have, you know, the money to get a console. I didn't have... I already had a computer, so I was, you know... And I had Minecraft, so I was like, oh, I'll just play Pixelmon. I didn't have, you know, uh, DS, 3DS, or I didn't get a Switch until... So, or Scarlet and Violet came out. Um, so I just had to make do with what I had. I didn't really emulate a ton. And I uh, just got into competitive through, you know, silly Minecraft Pokemon. And it worked out. I learned a lot. That's quite an interesting, like, story because um, I don't know any people. I don't, at least I don't know any people who, like, talk about Pixelmons. So what is Pixelmons for those of, for you know, if you could talk about it, because for a lot of people yeah. who don't know about it. So what Pixelmon is, is it's a mod for Minecraft that lets you um, catch and collect and essentially play Pokemon in a Minecraft setting. There isn't as much of, like, a story set like idea. It's their structures randomly generated, like gyms and whatnot. But for the most part, it's you're just running around a Minecraft world, catching Pokemon, um, completing, you know, the base quests that it gives you. There's not a lot. Um, and just trying to complete the Pokedex, catch legends. It's a good time. Um, I played on a server that was very organized and structured. So it gave me a lot of other things to do other than just run around and catch stuff. Um, and with that structure came tournaments. And in those tournaments, I learned how to play uh, competitive. 
and um, yeah, it was it was a good time. It taught me a lot about strategy. I learned from some very good players how to think about battling, and that stuck with me. That's good that you know a lot of the, your experience there, even if the game you know was different, maybe at that time is still looks like you still run to like that. So we haven't really gotten to talk too much about like your actual season itself. Um, you were able to play five out of the six games, correct? Uh, yes, I played five out of six games. I know that you know you get to win. You almost got to win almost all of them. Like whoa! So like talk. Let's talk about the games. Um, of so you played uh a game against uh CC. Um, yep, that's week five. Game, game against myself. Game against uh War. Basilisk, and then uh Gustav. Um, yeah. What, what did you think? and you bet in week two? You're right, and you bet in of course. Um. So what do you think was like your your favorite match of those of those five and why? Um, my favorite match of ooh, it's it's between Basilisk and uh, and Gustav. I think I know I won both. Um, but I think my favorite one about Basilisk was Basilisk brought a hype Dragonite set. Like fire spin. Oh, it roost. was it was so bizarre, but it was it killed my Toxapex. It was awesome. It was so cool. I did not expect that. Like I said, I think I've ever seen like a Dragonite use fire spin. <laughs> Stall Dragonite. Yeah. But yeah, to- yeah, because I remember like the whole toxic scenario. Where just like your Toxapex kept trying to go for the. Toxic and it just didn't work because it was. Oh, it encored me. That's right. It encored me too. <laughs> it was encore, fire spin, and I think it had roost. Or it, it might have only clicked fire spin and encore. I'm not sure. I don't remember off the top of my head. But it killed my tox specs, and that was awesome. Gustav, that battle was that was the one where I had the mirror herb Zapdos against the Oracorio. Yeah. And, and that was incredibly cool to pull off. It was really cool. Um, that was a last minute change too. I was just like, I had Rocky Helmet, and I look at his team, and I'm just like, there's like one mom that can have contact damage against me. I do not need Rocky Helmet. I'm scared of the Frozmoth and Oricorio here. I should bring Mirror Herb to try and stop it. And that's what I did, and it worked. So. Yeah, because you really need the extra speed um, against the likes of uh, a Dragapult on the team. And, yeah, uh, that was that was interesting because he let me like, whittle his Dragapult down really bad with my Lantern. He just let me keep scalding it, and it wasn't doing enough damage to me because I was a fat, you know, Lantern with uh with Protect and leftovers. So yeah. I just kind of scalded it out. It was interesting. He could have been set up. There. I was waiting for like an Ice Beam or something like that, but I guess it, I don't know if it just didn't learn it or you just didn't put it on. Yeah, I didn't put on Ice Beam. I think I was Sub, Protect, Scald, Thunderbolt, or, or Volt Switch. Um, I think that was the set with lefties. And I was just there to be annoying and stall out a little bit. And um, I did it. he let me do it against his Dragapult. He didn't have to do that. So, not why he didn't switch, but it worked out for me. Yeah. It worked out for me. So you really couldn't mention either myself or CC's as one of your favorite matches, even though they were so close. I hurt. I really liked uh, that Gustav match because I actually pulled something off interesting. That's fair. Um, not not necessarily to say that the match uh, against you was wasn't interesting. It came down to a one. Uh, it was a one zero win, but it was pretty predictable what was going to happen towards the end. You mm-hmm. lost your Rotom Heat. That was your big check. And yeah. then I pocketed my Meow mm-hmm. and I brought it in against some of your mons at the end, and I won. And, like, I could have... That was kind of what I wanted to happen anyways, and you'd let me do it, so... Mm-hmm. Um, and then against uh, CC, um, if I remember correctly, it was... I don't remember what I won by, but the Growlithe set was really cool. 
Oh yeah, it was also um, it was also a one one zero win. Mm, okay. Talk, that was when your talk specs had that huge like match with like Articuno, and Articuno didn't get. Oh the- yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That was a talk specs match. Um. Yeah, that was. That's probably the match I remember the least out of all of them. I just I'm drawn a blank. Don't remember much about it. Mm-hmm. It happens, you know, a lot of games. Just, just remember the Growlithe was cool. Yeah, not not many days you get to see a, a Growlithe in competitive Pokemon, just with like all the other Pokemon out there, you know. Yeah. All right. Um. So actually, I have a question this time from a boss baby. She sent me this um earlier today because she, she wasn't gonna be able to uh join the interview. Uh, this is her question. Uh, what is your proudest Pokemon moment? Proudest Pokemon moment. <laughs> uh, it's it's gonna go all the way back to when I was playing uh, Pokemon Gold on the um, Game Boy Color. Um, I remember I I must have been like eight, seven or eight playing this. I've been playing it for a little bit. Started a few save files, kept resetting, and um, I got to like the. It was the path from Goldenrod to the bug catching contest. And there's like a side path there where like some Yanma spawn. And I was just kind of um, putzing around in the grass, just like catching stuff. And Raikou spawned. And I didn't know what a Raikou was, but it looked cool. And then it ran away. And I spent a while hunting down that Raikou, trying to get it. I really wanted to catch Raikou, and I finally got it, and I was so proud of myself for hunting down and catching Raikou. I just wanted to run around and scream like an eight-year-old child would do, because I caught Raikou. I, I had no clue what was going on. All I knew is that I threw my Master Ball at it, and it, and it caught. I was so excited. I didn't know there were other legends. I just knew Raikou was there. And it was cool. <laughs> that was, that's definitely a moment that uh, you know, catching legendaries, or especially like a Pokemon that like flees and, and runs away is like such a mm-hmm. hard thing, especially at that, that time. That age, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Well, we definitely look forward to seeing what type of more moments you can have in the server. Um, whether it's a next draft league or uh, another tournament. Um, are you playing? So, are you planning to join for a uh, season six? Um, I would like to. It would definitely be awesome to to do so. I know uh, one of my one of my close friends. Uh, he joined, and um, I believe he said he wanted to join. The uh, the C- join season six as well, so it's just really cool to um to get some of my friends involved and uh, build the community even more. And uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be a blast, I think. So, um, yeah. Um. So that being said, are are you going to be rebranding to a, a certain dragon Pokemon? Oh, it's so tempting. <laughs> so I, tempting. It's, it's staring I, me at the face, and I have to ask, you know. Yeah, I... I should. No pressure, I was just curious. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure yet, because it's, it's an opportunity for me to be anything. Yeah. I could change my... my draft team completely, and I do like... That dragon Pokemon that is unnamed. It's very cool. I have a a plush of the unnamed dragon Pokemon, and uh, it's it's one of my favorites. So we'll see. Yeah, well, well and later. don't get that works. Rising drafts, um, first rounds. Um, I think something I didn't get to touch on is so. When you first joined Dale, you were known as Quagsire person. So everyone 
say hi, Dale, and add a quag sour gif. Um, <laughs> so you know, this server thing I think it has its own here, like hi chats among others. We were like impressions or thoughts when like started like saying hi to you all the time and just quag sour gif. So that was not the first time that I joined. Oh, I know. I draft draft right. rig. Right. Um, but but assuming that we're talking about that time when i actually stuck around yeah um exactly. yes uh it's it's awesome to see an active community like engaging with new people like it's it's very easy to you know someone new joins and they just kind of get get ignored a little bit i've seen it happen it's happened to me it kind of kind of sucks a little bit it's nice to engage new folks coming in that want to be engaged with and to talk pokemon and to talk you know, draft because draft is exciting and Pokemon is exciting, and uh, just having a great time doing it. That's that's what I live for. Yeah, this community is I, I consider definitely a friendly community. We try to say hello, and then like I know that you know sometimes it takes time for people to open up, so that's why I created like a question of the day. If people talk about things, you know, p Pokemon or even other things, and it's a great way for us for people to learn about each other. Um, you know, slowly and surely, and it's always fun to do things. Um, so you, we've done some question of the days, including some tier lists. Um, and for one of them, we did uh, something about cereal. I just have to know, like, you know, life is the, is the cereal for you that seems to resonate very strongly with like your core. Is there a particular yeah. reason, like, why life cereal? Why? <laughs> I like the texture. I'm a texture person. I like food with a certain kind of texture. I like frosted mini wheats too. I believe I tiered that pretty high. Um I like the like the grain texture of life especially. Um but I also like, you know, just having like a patterned like I like checks as well. Checks is really awesome. Yeah. Just just like that um I guess it's just the pattern when I'm eating it. It makes a little bit of dopamine go off in my head. <laughs> Totally, totally fair. Um, so, is there anything that you wish to tear in the future so we know more more about you, Dale? Yes. Um, let's say. Ooh, I oh no, I can't say that yet. I'll tell you later because I might ask this question in one of the interviews I'll do. Oh, okay. So we'll see. All right. So I'm gonna hold my I'm gonna hold my tongue. I don't know. Okay. Well, either way, we'll be looking forward to it. So, uh, I figured I'd ask the, the audience: Is there any questions that you, either of you, want any of you want to ask, or uh, or ask Dale like another few more questions? Thanks to everyone who's out. Hope you're having a day. Yeah, one come send a. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, opinions on Rowlet. Rowlet is a very... So I, I like round Pokemon. Round Pokemon are great. Regidrago is round. Togedemaru is round. Um, yeah. Uh, Magnezone's kind of round. I I like Rowlet. It's very round. So uh, I love it. It's great Pokemon. Thank you. Ladder's asking about... Raisin, Raisin Bran. Yeah. Um. Raisin Bran. Raisin Bran is great. Um. I like kind of the. I like raisins. They're good. Raisin Bran is is pretty good. I find it funny that this this gif here has the raisins taken out, but the raisins are the best part of the Raisin Bran. Like I don't know what to tell you. Bland cereal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so there. Uh, this one's uh coming from Davga. There's a this one's about Bolt League. So for those of you who don't know, we're running a bunch of league at this time. This off season, five, doing our first Wi-Fi league. We've had a lot of people uh, post their videos and stuff. Thanks to the people who have been. Um, shout out to them. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you aren't already. And so he wants to ask, um, who is winning Bolt League, and why is it Awesome Pie? I it's not going to be Awesome Pie. It's going to be Flygon. That's who I'm saying is winning Bolt League. 
and 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 why is it send Flygon? Um, I think Flygon's team is is the most interesting. Frosma Terra Frosmoth popping off as much as it has is just really cool to me. Um, also, like outside of um, outside of that particular Frosmoth popping off, um, the the KOs are spread really evenly. Like there isn't like another major KO leader, if I remember correctly. Um on that team so it's just a really it feels balanced i like it yeah i think that's one of the things that I, i've noticed about flygon flygon does a very good job of um distributing his kills um in all leagues that he plays in so there's not one no one clear cut um mvp on his team which is nice okay so you heard it first here um uh, bolt league winner is going to be flygon according to dale and we'll see how it plays out when this uh, interview gets uploaded next week because the match is tomorrow i don't think there's gonna be any live match because we haven't allowed them um it'll be interesting to see how his production goes um so did your team actually have like an mvp did my team have an mvp mm -hmm. um that i'm not sure if it really did i i know zapdos did really well and zapdos is probably the Pokemon I'm the most used to using, but I need to not use it in singles. It, I, I don't know if I can anymore in singles, at least. Yeah, I think, I think Zapdos did really well for you, and so did Miascarada. One of those Oh, Miascarada is probably the MVP then. Yeah, right? Yeah, one or the other, like if I were to pick one from, from your team. You know, I, I, I think that Zapdos pulling off that clutch set for you and that yeah. one thing just made it gives it a little bit more of an edge i think yeah that you know mascarade is one of the games for you for sure <laughs> mm -hmm. want a couple okay. and this says it's going to be the real lake of rage is the winner um i mean yeah maybe uh maybe some somewhere out of nowhere just the real lake of rage just re re rejoin joins the playoffs again yeah, didn't they get eliminated? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no! <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay. I, I, I say that knowing that I thought real Lake of Rage was going to win playoffs and then they were eliminated. <laughs> uh. So... <laughs> <laughs> I I kind of got burned already, um, so I'm gonna say Flygon is winning on uh, Bolt League still. That's fine. So I know there's a bunch of other leagues going on at the same time um, in the server. Is there any like why? Sorry, Showdown leagues. Um, are there any predictions that you have for any of them, if any? Okay. Um. So I so just sitting with the Bolt League, um, I think the final match is going to be um, King versus uh, King versus Flygon. Flygon wins. Um, if we look at Fire League, Fire League is going to be. Um, I think um, I think it's going to be X Term winning. If we look at Crown League. Where's Crown League? I don't I don't know who's still in Crown League, so I'm skipping okay. that one. Um and Boulder League. I'm trying to do this quickly because oh, yeah, I'm that's looking fine. for the pinned, the pinned message to oh, see. Good. And I'm not seeing a lot of pinned messages in those two leagues. Well, I know Wake League enough. So I think uh Battlestorm's gonna win. Um win Wake League. I wanted to see if Saris could pull it off. Oh, we were, we were um, talking about. Yeah, I wanted to see if Saris could pull it off, being the dark horse, but could not. So it's probably going to come down to. Um, I'm going to guess it's going to come down to Ubezin and um, and Storm in the very end, the one and two seeds, and I'm going to give the edge to Storm. That team is so busted. Yeah, yeah. I think Storm always drafts well. Um, 
still chasing that first league title, so out. Yeah. Uh, well. So for those of you who don't know Saris, Saris had the most interesting weekly experience, draft league experience this entire season. Um, hasn't been able to schedule every single game, and so there have been ga- there's been a season, nearly a season, of no games whatsoever. And the thing mm-hmm. is, because of the way it's been responding, um, Saris would get wins, forfeit wins, even though they didn't, yeah. even though she didn't play. And it was just unreal to think that someone could make it to the playoffs and not play a game. I played. I played. I had to play a game against against Saris, fortunately, so I didn't. Yeah. Know. It would have been crazy to think that you could get into the playoffs without playing a game. Yeah, that's um, that's an interesting situation, an interesting scenario to think about. Like, under most circumstances, it's just like that'll never happen, but it almost did. Um, Wake League's just been a very interesting league, and uh, it's nice to see that it's stabilized a little bit going into playoffs. So that's exciting that we we know the battles are happening this time. Yeah. So before we uh, close this interview up, uh, Dale, do you have any closing closing words? Any any things you want to share with the uh, audience or anyone else in the, in the server? Um, sure, I have some closing words. Thank you all for listening. Thank you all for potentially commenting, subscribing, paying attention to all of the draft rig uh YouTube videos coming out it's It's awesome to be a part of this community. It's awesome to be a part of the the production of something that goes out there um and thank you for the the few of you that were a- asking questions like it means a lot to me that you took time out of your day to ask questions to me. So, I appreciate you all. It means a lot. And thank you, Dale, for doing this interview, doing interviews with people, um, filling in as a draft as a draft league coach in a season with largely deprived of players. And we look forward to seeing what else you get to do in draft rig, as I'm sure as, um, as anyone else who will follow your story will be um so yeah thank you and i hope you have a good fourth even if you're not going to be doing a lot of grilling i still hope you get to enjoy the day yeah yes until next time until next time thank you